here with Howard Vliger, and I'll have you introduce yourself, Howard. We're in Beijing, China, for the International GMO Conference. Can you tell us about your talk and tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yes, good morning, Zen. Uh, Howard Vliger, uh, biological crop farmer and biological crop and livestock nutrition advisor. Uh, was very honored to be invited to present at this conference. It was an amazing event. Uh, the top researchers and the different individuals involved in the, uh, identifying and, and helping to solve problems related to GMOs and glyphosate herbicides. Uh, very, very informative, extremely well designed they had they, they covered every aspect it was uh, very well done uh, all of the aspects of the entire process the, the control aspect from the genetically engineered seed companies wanting to control all the seed supply uh, the certainly the, the damaging effects that we have documented and continue to further document document relative to uh, the GMO affected the environment uh, and the mammals that consume the crops and also the, the significant component that the glyphosate herbicide uh, causes for ill effects which are being more and more recognized, uh, still not widely recognized regrettably but I think events like this will certainly help to shed light on that and and that's very, very important, as you know, because we need to uh, protect the health of our children and the, the future generations with what's going on. So just a tremendous event and a, and a great honor and privilege to be invited and learned a lot. Uh, and, if, and if someone of your knowledge and expertise learned a lot, then it definitely was a fantastic conference. I, it, I agree. It, yeah. it, it was amazing. Uh, um, well, the animal aspect, what that really blew me away on all of the, the information that Claire Bleakley shared on what they've been attempting with genetic engineering relative to livestock. Um, it was a whole different aspect that many of us don't even imagine. Right? The only way it could be described is cruel and inhumane yeah. for the, the way the animals are suffering and what they showed. It, it, it's just... It's abhorrent to do that uh, all for the sake of purely financial gain on the part of the companies that are, that are doing it. it it's it's uh, very concerning that um, any entity could have that kind of moral corruption and decay to be so focused on, on money to do that sort of thing. To, to an animal. Yeah, I agree. Can you can you tell us the title of your talk and maybe summarize that in, in a couple of sentences? The title of my talk was called The Motivation, in which we I, I identified the tremendous revenue that the genetically engineered seed companies are collecting on the royalties of all the GMO seed. And then I also touched on the uh, numerous aspects of the ill animal health that we've witnessed beginning back in 1998 up to the present time and then uh, I alluded to, well Dr. Carmen who is the lead scientist on the scientific study we did on pigs she covered the scientific aspects of that but then I also shared the anecdotal information that we learned and that was the significant change in the behavior of the pigs that were fed the GM ration, so it was, it was uh, tried to get everything condensed into 20 minutes, and it, it, it went well. There was just lots and lots of information, and the, the thing that I was, I guess, the most pleased with was the fact that information overload didn't set in too quick. And I think there were a lot of people that, that being it was a 20-minute segmented type thing, that they were able to shift gears and go from one subject to the next and, or a different view of it and uh, go away with a lot of information. Yeah, your information was definitely information that no one else shared. Uh, so it was key to understanding the entire 
uh, scope and impact of GMOs and glyphosate. So I really appreciate you for the research that you've done um, in assessing all of that, both the loss to the crop, to the farmers from the uh, crop yield, loss of crop yield, uh, the loss of the uh, animals, their livestock, and the profit which the corporations make um, is just staggering. So thank you for your research on the uh, motivation, what really lies behind uh, GMOs and glyphosate and, and the use of that in our uh, country and in our world, and for your perspective on that as a, as a very experienced farmer and soil researcher. Thank you. I'm glad to always, always, <coughs> excuse me. I was glad to share. And uh, as you know, my email address is student of the soil. So the more you know, the more you know you don't know. So every day is a learning opportunity. Excellent, student of the soil, Howard Vliger, farmer and soil advisor. Is that what you said? Yes. Crop nutrition. Crop advisor. nutrition advisor. Excellent. Thank you so much, Howard. with Ib Pedersen at, in Beijing, China at the International GMO Conference, which just happened this weekend. Ib, can you tell us what you talked about at the conference, please? Well, I talked about uh, my experience in my big herd. Uh, I have a farm of 110 hectares and 450 mole cells, and weaning them up to 30 kilo. And uh, we have uh, experienced uh, change over from GMO soil to non-GM soil and we've seen some remarkable health uh, benefits from doing it. Can you describe some of those? Yes, we've had for a very long time uh, severe diarrhea straight after birth amongst the pigs and the pig mortality rates. And when we changed day two, that disappeared completely. Within two days, they stopped having diarrhea. Yeah. Now, what kind of health issues can come from having severe diarrhea? It's a, it's a, it's a type of diarrhea that is uh, started by Clostridia bacteria. Clostridia? As a type of bacteria. It's actually a type of bacteria that is more resistant to glyphosate than other bacteria. My so son I, had Clostridia. It's happening in right. humans as well. Well, that could well be the case. And, and so if you have a higher level of glyphosate due to the soya, for instance, then, then uh, they will take out your lactic acid bacteria, it's all your good ones, and you're left with the baddies. Uh, it, I also, same time, I also uh, experienced the same story with Clostridia bacteria, it makes bloat and uh, we used to have size dogs die occasionally after that, but that stopped. They can die of bloat in the stomach? Yes. Like inflammation? Is that what no, that is? It, it goes in the blood and the, if, it, if it ruptures from the stomach to the blood, it goes in the blood and you get it uh, inside your blood and you die very rapidly. Wow, so how many pigs do you have at this farm? In total? Yeah. Oh, Near 3,000. Near 3,000 pigs, and this is in Denmark. It's, uh, that is with uh, yeah. all the uh, small ones. No, no, it's more than 3,000, 3,500. 3,500, wow. Yeah. So you, how long have you been doing this? As uh, so the change so happened uh, in April 2011. Mm -hmm. Our medicine use went down to a third. We saw uh, that was straight from the day. And we never changed the practice, we just didn't have any sick pigs. So I want to point this out. So you changed over to non-GMO soy feed, yeah. and right away you didn't have to spend one-third of the amount yeah. of money on, on, on medicine for your yeah. pigs. And that is uh, good news, because uh, savings on medicine yes. pays for the extra price for non-GM soy. Isn't that wonderful? So it is cost-effective for you. Oh, yeah. No, it's very cost-effective, because uh, then I get all the extras from the the better productivity. We had almost two pigs uh, more wean per sow after because they didn't die. Wow, so you've, it has been more profitable for you to use non-GMO soy. Oh yes, it's been like uh, US dollars. It would be a hundred dollars per sow. More profitable? Yes. Wow, well then why aren't more pig farmers doing this? Well, you ask me. Oh, I, I, I am. <laughs> but it's, oh, my uh, but the funny thing is about that, I have actually asked uh, a lot. I'm sort of known to be an activist. You can hit my name <laughs> up on the internet, you'll see it. And uh, <clears throat> only because I think it's not fair that uh, Danish authorities hasn't taken my experiences serious. And then I, I take, uh, I, well, they are, they're trying to defend their ideas. <clears throat> so they yeah. do see me as a threat, if nothing else. 
the Danish pig producers, German, is actually very interested in what I'm, what I'm doing. Okay. And uh, I know that his uh, herdsman has been uh, buying a farm on his own. Yeah. And he's actually uh, had the same diarrhea problems. And uh, I know that I know that that herdsman has gone long the end. I've not been in contact with him, so I don't know what his results are. Okay. And so some people are taking notice. And there's, uh, there's two other farmers that I am involved in that has been uh, changing over, and they've both seen the same very large benefits. Excellent. One of them, the latest one, has had uh, 1,100 sows, and uh, he changed because he saw me on television, and uh, he uh, didn't tell his herdsman. The herdsman was super proud when the terrier came, he showed him around. And yeah, he had uh, almost, I think, 1.6 pigs more at the others of the south. And so they could milk, and we have had experience 1.8 more, but he has experienced 1.6 more at the other. Okay, so that's that's a lot because 1.6 more piglets. Yeah, times 2.3 in a year. Times but, two, yeah. but that just means to say that it's not necessarily that they die. If they're not there, they're at a, a spare mother as a breastfeeding mother. Another yeah. one. Yes. And uh, and um, but that takes up space, and it's not so efficient. It's better if uh, the real mother would do it. Yeah. And uh, and everything looked super good. And he told me, "Sir, I'm not using medicine for the no being di no diarrhea. You can tell her if the mother so is happy. When she fed the pigs, she would lay on the she lay on the side to yeah. feed the pigs. Uh -huh. Well, she would just stay on the side because if she's not happy." And the pigs are hungry, then, it'll, then they will start fighting, and they have got very sharp teeth. Oh. So if they are fighting, they can't miss biting the teeth. Oh. And, uh, and then she will have to lay on her stomach when she is not feeding them. And she will only feed them very shortly and not very often. Right, because they're biting her. So, yes. yes. And then oh. very quickly you get some pigs you have to take away or they'll die. Oh, okay. And, uh, and, um, but uh, like what we noticed was a total change in behavior. When we stopped feeding GM soy, they all were sleeping. The pigs were slain, they were nose to the other. And, and, uh, and they're all, all happy. They're all happy. Well, we moms would like our kids to be fed and happy too. <laughs> and we, we yeah. thank you for your contribution to this conference. And there's two issues on the yeah. conference. Yeah. That is a, a good issue of changing to non-GM. Yes. I wish a lot of other farmers would do it. And I'm, I made a study, it just come out. A lot of it's come out. Mm -hmm. uh, Monica Kruger in Germany has done my glyphosate test on the feed, the different food ingredients, and my meal keeps lock on the, on the food. And in that way, I've been able to uh, make an, a clear uh, Excel art on where and what day there has been how much in the food. And then I can go back as I had the pigs born and I've seen the number of deformities and uh, the types of deformities and the, the scientists in Norway have gone back and analyzed and found out uh, how many, uh, what happens. And if you look 35 days pushed in the view uh, as a, from the, the day to know they have it in the trough and, and then uh, see what as a, then take those sets. When you when, you, when you chart the amount of glyphosate compared yeah. to the number of days, what do you find? Well, what we find is that it's uh, not necessarily the first month, but it could be, but it's about there and until Ah, it's very difficult to say the exact days, but it's, uh, it's, it's not necessarily the very first day. It, it could be, but the, the peak seems to be uh, somewhat uh, first, second trimester. And, uh, it's, and it's severe for malformations. It's uh, okay, so you're uh, seeing of the brain's missing. Severe malformations from the mother pigs eating glyphosate while they're pregnant. We have been uh, together with Thomas Spoon, we have made uh, the graphs, and uh, we have we found out that if you feed 0 0.2 grams per ton, or parts per million, mm -hmm. in the food of glyphosate, as a parts, parts per million of glyphosate, and uh, then we have um, we have got 
more than if you feed 0.1 parts per million. Right. Yeah, that's uh, over a very long time. That is clear. It already starts at 0.1 parts per million. Right. And uh, at one part per million, we're five times higher than 0 0.2. So you see a significant change yeah. in just a small amount. And then when you, you mentioned when you go up to 2.2 .2 parts per million, it's a lot of malformations. Yeah. It's only one month, so it's not. But if you add that with the one month we had at uh, one, or just over one parts per million, then uh, and they were just after each other. And uh, then it's a very uh, clear picture. Over one, it's, it's one to two mm -hmm. uh, parts per million. We have uh, five times more than 0 0.2 parts per million. Okay, so from, from 0 0.2 up to 2.25, you had five times more okay. miscarriages and birth defects. Yes. Yeah, and you no. mentioned before that those sows that had five times more birth defects had lower levels of glyphosate in their urine than the mothers that had breast milk, glyphosate oh, yes. in their and breast no, milk. And not, and not only that, so funny thing, it's uh, five times more uh, defects but it's also five times the number of abortions. You mean miscarriages, as yes. far as mother's terms? Okay, yes. miscarriages. Yes. So they had five and, times and number... It is, uh, and in the pigs, it's uh, 0 0.95 pigs less born per litter. It's and smaller litters. Up. So it's astounding. I mean, this is... Moms really need to understand this, that the yeah. amount of glyphosate found in the mother's breast milk was less than what you oh, found. Much, much less. Much less. My sow's uh, urine, <clears throat> yeah. if you have urine samples, when they were at the peak, they had uh, 44, they one sow had 44 nanograms per milliliter. Which is parts per billion, 44 parts per billion, right? Yes, parts per billion. And, and our mothers <coughs> in their breast milk had 166 parts per billion. And one of your mothers had. Yeah. I would was, I was be um, very worried for not only her offspring, but also for her own health. Yes. And uh, if I follow the line of my sows on that, we would be very close on 30% deformities and 30% abortions. Well, that's where we're at in America right now. We have a 30% failure to conceive rate. Yeah. One Maybe out of three. Maybe not 30% uh, deformities, but abortions, yes. Yeah, Maybe miscarriages. Yeah, we have a 30% failure to conceive rate, meaning meaning one out of three one out of three of uh, conceptions are lost in America today. It's the highest in recorded history. So you're seeing a direct correlation between yeah. glyphosate, not only. Um, Clostridia and illness and diarrhea, but to birth defects and miscarriages. Yes. Thank you so much for your contribution and sharing this information. I know it's not easy. I know a lot we of have, people don't believe it, but, but we um, have, uh, you, we, have, you have facts. Yeah. We have, and uh, now I can say I'm not the only one. In Denmark, You're not the only one, yes. Uh, in Denmark, we are three farmers. I have a uh, salt farm. Yes. It's, uh, it's uh, two farmers more that has gone over that has. Uh, uh, that they had good results. I'm not knowing the results to take, but uh, but he's changing. My veterinarian has three of the farms in his machine, yeah. and um, and he says it's starting to move. Yeah. Well, hopefully you won't be the only ones for long. We hope thousands of people will see this video and the, the your talk yeah. from the conference. Uh, considering how much Americans love bacon, we would like to have those animals that we're eating be healthy. That would be a good thing. So thank you for your contribution to the, to the world and to bacon lovers everywhere. <laughs> thank you. And uh, there's uh, one more interesting thing that has happened is that I, I've been in contact with the Danish government and uh, that, well, it helps when you're on television. It was a television program a year ago, and the farming minister got asked uh, why we can't eat GM-free animals, because we don't, we don't market it in the supermarket. And uh, she said at the moment, we could eat organic. Well, that's never going to feed the Danish population. We don't have enough. And uh, she said, on the other hand, that she would let almost university, which is our land grant university, look into my experiences. And they have done. Okay. And I was in television half a year later, in another 25 minute uh, consuming program. I said to the farming minister that she should, he should be just change the, uh, the person that changed. I said to his press officer that it would be a good idea to remember what I said earlier. And um, 
unknown of me that the report from the scientist had been finished. And uh, well, we, we have had lots and lots of mails together with them and telephone talks, uh, and they've really gone in depth about it. Well, it's a professor and two senior scientists, and they told me they have worked with a whole lot of other scientists in each uh, branch on this paper to the minister. And they come out in full support of what I have seen in my pickouts is due to the glyphosate reference. And they even, the paper's headline is called something like glyphosate is uh, potentially toxic in doses far below what is today accepted in the EU. And that's much lower than in America. That is very significant. That's yeah. very important. And that's from reading scientific uh, papers. Uh, when I started speaking to the scientists, they weren't aware that glyphosate was an antibiotic at yeah. one, one part per million. Right. Well, you're allowed to feed 20 parts per million in the soil. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, they were not aware of the metal chelating effects it has. Mm -hmm. So the Danish minister has now taken a stand and uh, the scientist has written a paper on behalf of the Danish government to EFSA. Which scientist? The scientist who look into uh, my experiences. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, they have uh, asked EFSA to uh, answer on uh, the antibiotic effect that glyphosate has on the intestinal mi uh, microflora in the intestines. And uh, they have asked them to look into the metal uh, chelating effects that glyphosate has. And by, by metal chelating effects, you mean that it draws out? No, it, the it's uh, hampering the metals in, in working in the body. So it comes, that, ex, that part of the experiment comes from them looking at scientific papers. Okay. And Monica Queer did some tests. So can you try that again? What do you mean by metal chelating? What, what, well, what happens? It's, it's grabbing onto uh, metals and okay. ions. Like, we'll, like, we'll plus on the end. like iron and oh, it's uh, iron zinc. Okay, zinc, manganese, manganese. Boron. and and why is that bad? Well, it's it's very important because you can actually eat the minerals. Okay. Well, they are going to work if they have a roundup okay. a molecule on the end of it. So what that means is that that glyphosate makes those metals that are essential to us totally una unav unavailable. Unavailable. Right. And so when we become, we out, become mineral deficient then? Oh yes, very. Because okay. that comes from uh, the same scientist who did my study on deformities that just come out. And uh, she did on Danish cows, cows uh, that well, they had chronic botulism and uh, they were very uh, dying basically. And uh, veterinarian uh, took tests of the blood and the urine in these herds and she found glyphosate in all of them. Yeah, this is and, very important. And then she also noticed that she took um, the mineral of the blood, and there is uh, no known levels you should have in the blood, but uh, they were very deficient. As it was like one tenth or one fifth of what should be as a minimum yeah. in the blood of B12 vitamin, cobalt, and uh, manganese. This is very significant because children with autism are consistently deficient in B12 yeah. and in many other uh, vitamins. You get it from eating some Yeah, else. Yeah, and cancer is it also, can, all cancer patients are deficient in, in a you, many, uh, many you, vitamins and minerals. When you play with a toxic chemical like Roundup and you are, you are hammering the minerals right. in your body, you are shifting the whole setup of your health. As we basically, you are hammering your immune defense and cobalt is, is a, it goes in as part of the blood, and and uh, and if you if your body is screaming out for cobalt to make what it should make, well you're gonna be deficient, and yeah. and you are and you're not gonna have a body that works well. Well, we want bodies that work, and uh, so we'll be following your study closely and looking for more information coming out. And um, I want to point out that pigs are especially uh, important to be studying because they have a digestive system that's very close to human Perfect. beings. So, and they also don't smoke and don't drink, so they're even oh, better. That is a good thing about mine. Yeah. So my, uh, I couldn't Your pigs don't pig smoke. Because I have to smoke. No, but, but the thing is that uh, <laughs> the pigs is very, uh, it's a very good base for, for science. Because yeah. uh, 
you can't help how the pigs born. You you are, you have them born every day. Yeah. And in my little study, it's 33,000 pigs born, so that there is enough pigs to make statistics. Yeah. Whereas if you had a rat study and you only had uh, the odd uh, deformity born, well, if you, you are gonna end up with over 30,000 uh, rats born before yeah. before you're gonna find. Uh, statistic basis yeah. to, to make your assumption, well, that's never going to happen. Yeah, so pigs have more pregnancies, more litters, their digestive systems are closer to ant to humans, yeah. and they're cleaner to study because they don't have the other um, environmental have, so toxins that humans do, so it's even a we, more we, accurate They feeding. don't uh, wash hair, they don't do anything right. they else. don't wash their hair very right? yeah. okay. uh, <laughs> but we, uh, But they, uh, they, on the other hand, we know exactly what we fed them, how yes. many kilos and how many past million glyphosate. Well, thank you so you, for your very, very important work. We can't wait to see more information coming out. And thank you for flying all the way from Denmark to China to share this. Uh, we